so I um I actually grew up in Maine, and I um uh, my freshman year in high school, I decided to take a CPR class, and it was mostly because my friends were taking the class. Like I had no interest in learning CPR, but all my friends were taking it, and important things to you your freshman year are pretty much like I just wanted my look to be really classic and my hair to be big. <laughs> Those were important things to me. And all of my friends were gonna take the class, so I took the class too. And the good news is, is that the class was pass fail. So I wasn't the best student, so my chances were really good that I was gonna pass. And you can barely pass, and with pass fail, no one knows the difference. You either pass or you fail. So I was really excited about it. And it wasn't a horrible class, it was kind of fun. There was, um. Uh, a routine that we got to do, and uh, they pulled out a fake dummy resuscitation Annie. Does anybody remember her? She's this um, dummy with no arms or legs, and big, like, slight smile on her plastic face. And uh, you would practice the CPR on the dummy. And uh, the instructor was really cheeky. They would put T-shirts on the dummy. Uh, like one week, it would be like a classic Coke T-shirt. And like the next week it would be like our school mascot. And then a frequent t-shirt was um, this don't worry, be happy t-shirt with like a big smiley face with the dreadlocks. Do you remember that t-shirt? <laughs> <laughs> On the dead resuscitation Annie doll. Don't worry, be happy. And um, we would practice just for hours and hours on the resuscitation doll, just practicing, practicing. And the instructor made it fun because she said that if you do CPR correctly, it's to the song Staying Alive. Has anybody? Uh, 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 staying alive, staying alive. So it was really, it was fun. We would sing it out loud. Um, it was fun. I was catchy and I was getting really good at CPR on the fake dead person. And I was really felt good about it and I passed. And I was thrilled and my parents were thrilled and um, I felt good about it. It's a good way to like wind up my freshman year. I felt good about it. Stellar ending. Uh, summer came, I was really excited about that. And my family, growing up in Maine, we camped in the summer, that's what we did. We seasonally camped, which is not something a lot of people know about. It's basically, you find a campground you really like and you set up shop near the lake. It's like our version of summer home. <laughs> summer homeless. <laughs> we, so we had a lake house, like homeless. And uh, we would camp there every weekend. It was like we had a summer place, but we didn't. And uh, we would go to this uh, campground every single weekend. And it was fun. My relatives also camped there. So, which now that I'm saying it out loud, sounds like we had like a weird commune thing. It wasn't, it was just <laughs> camping. And uh, this, there was a very, very sunny Saturday and we were at the campsite and we were preparing for a party and we were really excited about the party. Uh, we were, um, I remember it was a really warm day and it was my cousin's birthday and we were really excited because we always celebrated his birthday at the campground. And uh, we were decorating the picnic table and the awnings, the screen tent, which is just a tent that you can see through. <laughs> fancy, uh, the, the dining room, if you will, and uh, it kept the mosquitoes out, which was nice. And my Aunt Millie, his mother, was making a cake, and uh, she made the best cakes. It was a, a bear-shaped cake, chocolate cake with chocolate frosting, and like gumdrop <laughs> eyes, and like little gumdrop buttons, like he was wearing a suit. <laughs> uh, and then a big like cherry red licorice smile. Like wicked happy, <laughs> chocolate on chocolate bear cake. It looked amazing. I was like, oh, that was a fucking delicious cake right there. I'm excited about it. And uh, I was watching her frost it, and uh, everybody was hanging out, and my dad was firing up the grill, and we saw this woman coming up from the lake. And as she got close to our campsite, we noticed that she was stopping at every campsite, very frantic, like stopping. And in my mind, I always go to food, so I was like, I wonder if she's out of hamburger rolls. And uh, <laughs> she must be out of hamburger buns. This is horrible. Someone should, someone should go to town. And uh, <laughs> so she's stopping at every campsite. And then finally, she was coming towards our campsite. And she was very upset. And I was screaming, does anyone know CPR? Does anyone know CPR? Anyone? And my mother 
went, she does, and pointed at me, who was propped up on a stool, licking a beater. Like, I was like, yum, 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 <laughs> Me? And I said, oh, I, I don't, um, I was past fail. <laughs> And uh, my mother's like, you can do this, you passed it. And I was like, oh, oh did I? You, it's, uh, yeah, but it's not something you can say no to. Like if someone comes up and says, we need someone who knows CPR, you can't be like, well, if you don't find anyone else, <laughs> you come on back around. You finish licking these spatulas, and then you, you can't find anyone. It's not like that. It's not like, hey, can you house sit my cat? No, like, it's, uh, clearly this is like, it's time sensitive. So, <laughs> so she does. I'm like, I know. And she grabs me by the arm and leads me down to the lake. And the whole walk down, I'm like, what? What is happening? This is, I'm very nervous. I don't think I remember anything, can't remember anything. I'm drawing a blank, and my dad was trailing behind. And he was like, are you okay? And I was like, what? No, no, I am not okay. We don't even know what's going on. And the woman starts to debrief us. And she says, uh, someone found a man floating upside down on a blow up raft. And they pulled him from the lake, and he's not breathing. So in my mind, I thought, well, maybe by the time we get down there, he will be up and walking around. <laughs> like maybe he was sleeping. <laughs> and when I get down there, we'll have a good laugh about this and get to have some ice cream. <laughs> and that wasn't the case. We, we got to the beach and uh, they had pulled him from the water and laid him on his back and he was on a very bright, uh, very cheerful beach towel. It was a very bright colored beach towel with like these cartoon dolphins that were smiling. And he was laid out on his back. He was wearing orange and yellow swim trunks. Uh, pretty fashionable for a man of his age. I would have guessed he was in his late 60s. Uh, he was ginormous, just enormous. I'm five feet tall. I, it looked like I was gonna have to climb up on him <laughs> to do CPR. He uh, had a giant bloated beer gut and very hairy chest, like more hair than I, I was 14, more hair than I've ever seen in my entire life. And it grew up over his shoulders like moss on a building and came down his arms. He had a full mustache that if he wasn't wet or in the water for several hours, would have been like full and fluffy, but instead it was matted to his face. He looked like a giant walrus on his back. And I looked at him and tried to look like I was assessing the situation. Like, like I just walked on a crime scene. I was like, yes, I see it. I know exactly what to do. Uh, and in real life, I, my stomach was flipping like over and over. And I'm getting that, uh, that saliva buildup in your mouth that you get when you feel like you're gonna be sick. And all you want to do is hover over a toilet because that's going to help to just relieve you. But I'm thinking, don't throw up. There's a lot of people around. And I want to make sure that you focus. So as I approached him, I kneeled down. And a woman, much older than I was, uh, short, salt and pepper hair, uh, still in her bathing suit, sunburned, uh, touched me on the arm and said, I'm going to help you. I will do the breaths. And I was like, thank Jesus. <laughs> because I had never even kissed a boy, never mind a boy with a big full mustache. So I was like, sounds good to me. And we had heard about two-person CPR in CPR class, but it's very outdated, and it wasn't really something that they approve of now, whoever they are. And, uh, <laughs> but I was like, I am willing to take the help. So she did everything normal. She tilted the head back, she did the shake, uh, in my mind, it went, Annie, Annie, are you okay? I don't think his name was Annie. I'm guessing his name wasn't Annie, but Annie, Annie, are you okay? I was like, that's right. And then I was like, mm, 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 staying alive, staying alive. And I got ready to do my part, which is the compressions. So I clasped my hands together, and I had him on his chest ready to go. And I was thinking, I really wish he had on 
that T-shirt that Annie used to wear because now I can feel how cold and hard his flesh is. Like frozen solid is what it felt like. And it was my turn, so I began to do the compressions. And just like they had warned me in CPR class, I felt the ribs break underneath my hands. Just repeatedly breaking and cracking. And Annie also had a rib breaking noise, but it was just a pleasant click. Click, click, click. This was more of like a, I could feel them all breaking underneath my hands. And he wasn't coming to, he wasn't reviving. People were watching, they were very hopeful. And I just kind of went into a, a zone, into a daze, and just kept doing the CPR. She would breathe, I would do the CPR, she would breathe, compressions, breathe, compressions. I don't know how long it went on, I have no idea. It feels like we were doing it for probably an hour, but I'm guessing it wasn't quite that long. But it was long enough for me to be scarred for life. Because when the uh, ambulance got there, they quickly shoved us out of the way. And I noticed no one was saying anything to us. No one thanked us. No one said, uh, wow, thank you for doing everything you could for my father or my brother. It was very, very weird. Like, no one was claiming him. Like, he had just wandered down there or floated from a campsite across the lake and then flipped. It was very strange. And I watched the EMTs. They were with him for just a few moments. And they picked him up and then zipped him up in a bag. And it was done, like a package. And they put him in the back of the ambulance and drove away. And we walked back to the campsite. And we didn't say a word. We didn't speak. And I said to my father, I'm going to stop by the community bathroom. I feel like I need a moment. And I stopped and I washed my hands for like a good 15 minutes. And like wash, washed my hands. Like all the way up to the elbow, scrubbing with very hot water. Just like I was ready to go into surgery, like a doctor prepping. Just washing and washing. Collected myself. I didn't shed a single tear. Just could, didn't even have it in me. That feeling of exhaustion when you can't even pull an emotion. I didn't have one. And I knew that he was gone. I knew he was dead, but I didn't really understand if he died before I got there or after I got there. All I know is I just had my hands on a dead person, a dead stranger, for like the last however many minutes it was. When I arrived at the campsite, I thought that I was going to be welcomed back as somewhat of a hero, a brave, brave little biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> And when I walked up, the response I got was, oh, Kelly's back. And as soon as that happened, my aunt emerged from the camper with a bear cake on fire. And they sang, happy birthday to you. To which I joined in, happy, what the fuck is going on? Happy birthday. I ate four hot dogs, four, not light, or reduced fat, like genuine, real red snappers you can only get in Maine. <laughs> I then uh, proceeded to eat cake like it was my job, and no one questioned it, no one criticized, and we didn't say a word about anything that had happened. No one spoke about it. Nowadays, if a kid went through something like that, they would be in therapy like the next day. <laughs> they'd, be, they'd make them draw their feelings, show me on the wall where he touched you, like it would be. <laughs> Nothing, I didn't get any of that, nothing. It was just normal, like a normal day, like something that just happened and we all just kind of moved on. To this day, we've never spoken about it. But what I can tell you is this. This experience has made me realize that there's nothing I can't overcome with a delicious piece of chocolate on chocolate bear cake. <laughs> Thank you. I'm Kelly. <laughs>